Hello everyone, good afternoon. I hope you're keeping warm on this freezing day. I wanted to start by reading to you two quotes which I got out of a book written by Monty Don. It's called Down to Earth. The first quote is, has the title Food and it goes like this. Grow your own. I have yet to meet a single person who does not agree that any food carefully grown, picked when ready and in its due season and eaten absolutely fresh does not taste better than any food, however glossily packed, from a shop. The satisfaction of sowing seed, raising little seedlings, thinning, watering, weeding and ultimately harvesting the final product when it is exactly at its best and then serving it to be eaten with family and friends is matched by few other pleasures in life. That's his first quote. His second one is entitled, Gardening is Well-Being. We use the expression being grounded or keeping your feet on the ground to indicate being in touch with reality, keeping ourselves honest. I feel exactly the same way about having my hands in the soil. It keeps me true and rooted. When you grow something, anything at all, it can never be ours in any other, anything other than an adoptive way. It exists and independent of us and we share it with anyone and everyone who sees or consumes it with us. I think that this sharing process is what completes the true healing circle of a close, intimate connection with the soil. If our own personal batteries are charged by it, then it is equally important that there is a social charge too, and one that we do not need to intellectualize to share and benefit from. So those are the words of Monty Don. So I came across this man called Mel Bartholomew many years ago. I don't know how many years, in the 90s anyway. And he wasn't a gardener. He was a civil engineer. So he was someone who saw a problem and wanted to fix it. And he looked at the problems of growing vegetables and he decided to do it differently. So one of the things he decided to do was to make sure that the soil you have is really good soil full of nutrients. Because obviously what we need from our body, for our bodies is directly connected to what is in the soil. And it's the plants that transfer the minerals and the nutrients and the vitamins from the soil into our bodies, into our mouths. So he, um, his idea was to have a raised bed and to fill it with a special kind of soil, not garden soil. So his idea was to do a third compost, a third something else. And at first he used peat moss, but we don't use peat moss anymore. So I've just done one. We've recently done one this, over the last um, uh, few weeks when we've been shut in. And I use coconut choir, which was impregnated with seaweed, and that seems to be very successful. Although I have heard, heard read since that it's not very economically, um, environmentally friendly. And then um, the, the other third is to use vermiculite, which is a natural project that holds moisture, really a lot of moisture, so it keeps the soil moist. So this man thought, Mel Bartholomew thought that single row gardening took up too much time and space and seeds were wasted when you do thinning. A lot of time is wasted weeding and treading on the soil compacts the roots and stops them, stops them forming. So he didn't see the point of digging where you needed, where you needed to walk. So um, raised bed is done four foot wide square or we've done an eight by four foot now but it means that you can always reach to the middle because you can reach about two feet 
So you can put a raised bed absolutely anywhere on any surface. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether it's grass or concrete or your patio. And you can make a small one, you can make a four by four one. So this method is actually called square foot gardening. And um, in the ones that I made originally, it was four foot by four foot, so 16 squares. And you'll see in the video later that you divide them up into square feet. And um, you, let me see, look at my notes. And so the idea behind it is about the area that is occupied by plants. So you put, if you've got, a, imagine you've got a square foot, you'd be able to fit 16 carrots in that square foot, but only one kale or four lettuces. So you plant according to the size of the plant. Um, so you have a grid of 12 inches by 12 inches. And um, yeah, uh, so shall we show the um, video now? So I've had quite successful uh, planting so far and, and harvest. I've already harvested quite a few things. And we've got two beds that are roughly eight by four. And Gordon has this, um, last, in the last three months, built cages over them. Because last year, my purple sprouting broccoli got so eaten, I was very disheartened. And so we've put cages over, covered with mesh, and it's gonna keep out all the critters. So perhaps we can go over now and see the video that we made this week. Hello, it's, uh, it's a morning here at the Raggett um, household and uh, this is our garden. It's not huge. Um, Joy's uh, wonderful at growing things. And here's the lady herself. Hello, Joy. Hello. Uh, so here we are in our garden and we're just going to show you um, what you want to talk about today, Joy, which is about... Growing vegetables. Which is one of your favourite things, isn't it? It is one of my favourite things to do. And um, so tell us about this scheme there. So we've got these these beds. Do you want to talk through with us about uh, these raised beds and why you've done this particular uh, form of gardening in this way? Tell us about that. OK, well, this is something I came across many years ago and it's called foot square gardening. And it means that you can grow a lot in a short space. And because we haven't got a big garden and I want to have flowers and vegetables, um, it really appealed to me. So the idea is that you build um, a, an area four foot square, or as we've done this time, eight foot by four foot. So the idea is that uh, a human, uh, uh, normally a person can reach two foot across the arm's length is two foot so if you make it four foot you can reach two foot either side and you don't have to walk on it and that means that um, you don't have to ha make room for walking between rows or um, you don't have to dig with big tools you just um, use small tools and you use every bit of your area so there's no walking between rows and there's no compacting of the soil which means that the roots grow much better Okay, sounds, sounds great. Let's take a closer look, shall we? Okay, so this is a particularly special garden now because of what Gordon's made for me this summer. So um, we've, we've built raised beds and this, this time we decided we wouldn't use wood. I've used, the last time I used scaffolding boards and I coated them and they lasted me five years. Um, so they, they were rotten after five years. So this time we've used brick and on eBay, we got some hardwood that had already been coated in sequins, and we've put that round the top. So it's about, uh, it's two bricks, about three bricks depth, uh, which is about eight, eight to 10 inches. And that's all you need for the depth of soil. So you can see, if you can see, Gordon has, has built over the top of this, um, a protection like a cage, which we've, we've um, put mesh onto by using a staple gun and that will keep out birds, cats, slugs, snails, um, 
particularly cabbage white butterfly, but it will also keep out all the little flies like black fly, green fly, white fly, carrot fly. So hopefully my vegetables are well protected. So come and have a look at how good they're looking this year. So we can open out the top, take off the lid and have a look inside. So here we have, um, I've divided up my eight foot by four foot garden into square foot plots using a bit of washing line. So we've um, got a secure, something secure to tie the washing line onto. And there's, so there's um, 32, I think, four by eight, eight by four, 32 squares. And we can, I can use all uh, different plants in each square. And so there is a planting scheme whereby you plant so many plants to a square foot. So you base it on the area that a plant takes up. So here we have radishes. I've grown, you can see white radishes and red radishes. I'll pick one for you so you can see how well these radishes are doing. Here's a radish. That's a radish, a long radish. Radishes are really good for you. They're like a natural antibiotic. So I've grown round ones here. You can see there, round ones long one long red ones and long white ones and so you can see half of that has already been harvested i've already had a whole load of red radishes so i will use my tools and uh, sow another lot so i do successional sowings which means i have vegetables right through to the autumn so that's the radishes this here is swiss chard Swiss chard actually doesn't grow huge on this. I've never managed to grow the size that my friend grows, which is about 18 inches. But it's another uh, green. And obviously, the more greens you have, the more benefit it is for your health. So I've got two of Swiss chard here. I grow parsley because parsley is really good. It's full of calcium. And I, make, I grow a lot of greens because we use greens every morning in our green smoothie. So here I'm growing some spring onions. So these I sowed first, they're slightly fatter and these are thinner because I sowed them later. And th this is the first time I've ever grown fennel. Fennel is so beautiful, the fine leaves. And um, apparently you earth it up a bit like you do potatoes and that's how you get the nice white bulb. So you I'll bring in some more earth and pack it round each bulb and that will make a nice white bulb. And there you can see I've got um, French beans. French beans there. They're, come, they're not ready yet. So I can put my lid back on, close it up with this little hook, and then show you what's next on this side. So we've got two raised beds. So this is the sh one with a shorter top. So I've got um, spinach growing here beetroot i've got three squares of beetroot one is a choggia beetroot which is um white pink and red stripes on the inside i think it's really fun to grow things that you can't buy in the supermarket and this is spinach we just have loads of spinach when you can cut it and eat it raw i put it in green smoothies or we have it with salads and then here i've got carrots so i can grow one, two, three, four, five, six, six by six, 36 carrots in a square, four um, spinach in a square, and then coming down further to the end, this one here, you will see that I've got more beetroot. So this is the darker red than the normal beetroot. So I think I've got one called Boltardi. And then here, this will be red cabbage here. Uh, and this is lettuce and the way I, I use lettuce is to grow a whole lo load of lettuces so I've got two so there's four in each square and I just pick off the outer leaves and that just keep I don't harvest the whole lettuce but when it, it just keeps on producing leaves so I use the outer leaves pick off a few and that keeps them going and I don't keep need to keep seed sowing lettuces Wow. So you'll be able to see there that there's some that are um, 
not used yet. So I'm waiting for leeks to go in. I've got leeks on, on my other bed. Um, so they will be using up the last six that are free or seven here. This here is basil. Gorgeous to go with the tomatoes that we're growing in the greenhouse. So that's one raised bed. And as you can see, it's intensive, but because the soil is so good, and I'll tell you about the soil, uh, I, I will have told you about the soil already. The soil is so good that it produces great crops. Uh, and as you can see, everything's really green and healthy. Um, and it means that you don't have to dig, you just use hand tools. Let me show you the uh, hoe that I use. <coughs> So this, this is my tools down here. So normally I use this little hoe to hoe between the vegetables. Tiny little thing, there's no effort at all, there's no big um, digging. And then when I use, turn it over maybe at the end of um, the autumn, if, I'm, if I've, I'm turning it over for winter, to leave it winter, I just use hand tools. This is my big hoe and my uh, trowel and spade, my trowel and fork. So let me show you the other raised veg. Why is this one taller? This is taller because um, I've got purple sprouting broccoli in the front here and that grows to about three feet. So I want to be able to get in and pick it without banging my head. So we made it a bit taller. And Gordon has very cleverly put on these screens at the side which I can take off. And you can see it is a mass of green now. Wow, it looks so So I've healthy. grown all these from seed in the greenhouse. On the left, we've got uh, eight purple, sprout, um, purple sprouting broccoli. So that will be ready next year. And that will grow right up. Last year, I was checking it every day because I didn't have a screen. I was checking it every day for cabbage white butterfly because if they get lay their eggs on there and the caterpillars hatch, that's the end of your crop. So I was away and um, I, I had to go away, look after my daughter who had had a baby. And the cabbage white butterflies took residence in my purple sprouting broccoli and just ate the whole lot. And it's so disappointing when you've grown it from seed. So those are them. And they'll grow about this high and they'll be ready next February. And then you can see this is dwarf kale. Now, kale is the best greens you can possibly eat. It's full of all sorts of nutrients, vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin B, calcium, lots of other things. So eating it raw is just about the best thing you can do. So I grow here, you can see I have one in each square. I don't know how many I've got here, a lot. That's kale. And then this is a darker kale. I've got, can you see down the other end? Yep, I've got that. Yep, down the other end is a darker sort of kale. It's called Cavallo Nero. And I've got nine of those. Wow. So I just mix up the greens that we have in the morning. And then if you can see in the far side, those spiky things, those are leeks. So I shall be planting them on the, in the other one. Um, when they're when they're a bit bigger so this is just to grow them to a certain size yeah that's size, like a seed bed I, grow, I started them, them off in the greenhouse and then i'm growing them on here and then I, I shall plant them in the other one but i've got too many so i should be giving some away just a joy this year there's been a, i've been able to give um lots of plants away because i've got i've been blessed with an alpine house which i was given 25 years ago and um, oh, just one little thing here, you can see what I do is I do catch crops just between these greens here. I've grown another load of radishes because they only, they're only in the ground for about eight weeks. Um, so there's space to grow them before these get too big. So I, I just maximise the area that we've got and grow things like catch crops. Wow, that's, uh, that's impressive. And this, this isn't a huge area then, Joy, so uh, it's about what's the measurement of this particular bed there? Uh, well, this is, this is nine foot, um, eight foot six long by four foot six wide. Yeah. Um, we just did it according to the length of the wood that we bought. Yeah. Uh, so it's slightly bigger, so, but I can just about reach yeah. into the middle. 
with my so little So you tools. can make raised beds with uh, wood, with uh, yeah. railway sleepers, with yeah. all sorts of different you things. You made railway sleeper beds. It would cost you a bit more to start with, but they would last, I reckon, about 20 years because they're so thick. Yeah. And then you line them with something. You get some kind of um, weed suppressant membrane and you line them and then you make your compost. So you use a compost, some other ingredient like leaf mold, or I use something called coconut choir, which um, was impregnated with seaweed, so it was really healthy, and something called vermiculite. You add that all together, a third of each. Vermiculite is um, a natural product which um, really absorbs water. I've forgotten it's like something 40 times its own volume in water. And so it holds the moisture in the soil. So I just water once a day in the evening and that's enough. Wow. Thank you. How exciting. It's really good. It's great to see uh, the plot and see what you're making. And uh, I know you're going to be talking all about it much more uh, on, the, uh, on the webinar. I am. Thank you. That's great. Well, well done, Joy. Um, that, was, uh, that was inspiring, just watching uh, that video that uh, we put together earlier this week. So... Um, if you've just joined us, by the way, on this webinar, welcome. Uh, if you're watching, join the course of that. If you've got any questions at all, and Joy's going to carry on chatting in a moment. If you've got any questions at all, please use the chat feature there and uh, raise any questions or any comments you want to make. And I'll, I'll host and Joy will keep talking. And if there's, if, you know, if there's any, anything you want me to ask Joy, then that's absolutely fine. So she can concentrate on giving some helpful tips and ideas around how you can create a raised bed and enjoy wonderful produce. So, Joy, back over to you and uh, please uh, tell, us, uh, tell us more because I'm sure people want to know more about how you do this. Okay, well, there's some statistics here um, from Mel Bartholomew that you get 100% harvest which is great. And what I've realized um, this time, because it's, it's, the soil is fresh and new, um, like when you're growing lettuces or greens, usually the bottom leaves are um, dried out. You can't use them. They, they, they rot in some way. Well, this year I have been harvesting every leaf right down the bottom of the lettuces, the ones that are lying on the soil, well, they're not quite lying on the soil and I've been using them. It's just been amazing, the um, harvest that I've had this year. Um, he says that it costs 50%. Well, I can't verify that. Obviously, we spent quite a bit on paint and other expensive things. Um, but obviously, it's going to last. That will last many years. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it is expensive to start off to buy the soil um the raised bed but then you can do everything cheaply so there's a um a, web, a youtube video called garden in minutes and it's the same method but it's done very cheaply um the guy on there so you can look that up garden in minutes on youtube and he explains how you can set it up really cheaply um it takes 20 percent of the space the normal vegetable garden. It needs 10% of water because it's got vermiculite in which holds the water, 5% of seeds and 2% of the work. So now it's set up and uh, all I have to do, I, I weed as I harvest, tiny bit of weeding and um, watering and sowing more seeds is all I have to do now. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, I keep my seeds in the fridge and I find that a seed packet will last me five, six, seven years. Hardly spend anything on seeds. So, um, I, I, I tend to, to over sow and give them away. So I was actually quite glad to give stuff away. Um, it's, it's hard to only sow what you're going to use. So I've given away a lot of greens, kale this year, and then I advertised about 50 tomato plants on Facebook Marketplace. Some people came and collected those. Um, yeah, so 
I'm very blessed to have a, an alpine house, which is a good size, and I can manage to raise lots of seedlings. Well, you could do that, um, obviously, indoors, um, couldn't you? Yeah, Locals, yeah, you know, your... I did. I did last year. Indoor well, I, I started a lot off this year indoors in March, but I, you can start them even earlier if you want, in February, indoors, take them out to the greenhouse. And then pricking out is a bit of a labour intensive job, but if you're listening to something, it goes quite quickly. And I make, um, well, this year I've started using the inside loo rolls to make little pots with, but I've got one of those paper potters. So I make up pots out of newspaper as well as I've got little plastic ones. But if I run out, I make my own. Uh, and I fill that greenhouse with greens, all sorts of greens, flowers as well as plants. So a couple, um, and it's, it's, yeah, a couple of sorry. questions, Joy. Uh, just yeah. Yeah, um, Jane and Sue were asking about the netting, first of all. Um, where did you get it from? It looks very fine. Uh, did you get it from a garden centre or did you buy it online? So I bought it online. Netting. Bought it online. Um, I, I might have... What do I do with it? Um, I can't remember where it is. Yeah, I, it was just... It's called a mesh, I think. Garden it, mesh. Um, yeah. Sorry? A garden mesh. Garden mesh. Yeah, it's not netting. It's finer than netting. But it lets all the breeze through and you can just water through it. Um, I just thought netting, well, the little flies are going to get through the netting. So I got something finer. Um, and I, I, sew, I sewed, it was very, quite a loose weave. So it frayed very easily. And I've got an overlocker. Uh, or you could do it a zigzag on your sewing machine, just sew all, around all the edges to stop them fraying. And then we used um, a staple gun to staple it on, onto the wood. So I have no idea how long it's going to last because obviously it gets a good soaking every day. But um, yeah, I think it's so far so good. So it's, it's something new that I've tried. But it's are. certainly keeping out all the bugs. Yeah. We have another raised bed there with a different kind of, I mean, this is for a fruit uh, trees. Do you want to just talk about it? Because obviously not all uh, produce that you're growing, Joy, is going to need that kind of fine netting. So no. You, you can do a netting that's obviously appropriate to whatever it is you're growing. We have another yeah. raised bed, don't we, for fruit trees. Yeah, we've got four blueberry bushes in another raised bed, which Gordon's made. And we've put on netting that the birds can't get through. So that's, I don't know, um, it's probably two inches across, something like that, um, in, the, in the squares on the netting. And uh, I've made, I've put tape round two sides so we can take it off and be able to pick the blueberries. Um, this is called four square gardening, somebody's asking. Four square, square foot. Square, square foot, foot gardening. Actually, square foot gardening. Um, started by, uh, invented by this guy called Mel Bartholomew. He's since, he died about four years ago, but he was an American guy. And uh, it's been taking off ever since. Uh, that was in the 1980s and uh, uh, it's really popular around the world. You can find lots of YouTube clips about it all and even Mel Bartholomew talking about it, can't you? Uh, yeah. Just unpacking what it was. So he, he applied his engineering brain to solving a, a gardening problem. And, yeah. and got incredible efficiency. I'd like to ask you, Joy of Round, um, you know, this kind of levels of efficiency that you can expect with this kind of form of gardening. So you, you obviously, you do your sowing of seeds and planting out and uh, uh, in, the, in February, March, as you were explaining, and then you're sowing. So do you, do you get crops all the year round? Or, or, or you know, what, what can you expect from this little bit of, patch of ground that you put okay on that you, you know you grow things in well it depends entirely what you want to grow so some crops like radish i love growing radishes because six weeks later you've got a crop so um i can get three or four crops of radishes from one patch and i have bought a big tub of blood fish and bone meal which i add a little bit to the soil when I'm going to seed again, sow the seeds in. So that keeps the soil good and um, so it can, it, it's full of nutrients. Um, 
So some crops obviously take longer to mature. So I, I showed you the purple sprouting broccoli, which um, lasts a year. So you sow it in February or March, like I did in March, and then it slowly grows until it produce, starts producing its lovely sort of purple flowery shoots in February, March time. And then it starts going to seed at the end of April. So that's the end of its life. So um, it, it just depends what you want to grow, really. Um, you can do successional sowing. So lettuces, I, I showed you what I did with the lettuces. But if you want to pull up a whole lettuce and uh, all, all, all four lettuces, you, can, you would get three lots of lettuces from one square over the growing season. So obviously growing is affected by light and uh, it's the light hours that we have largely in the summer that makes the growth. So the lean patch is April, May time because what you sowed in the previous March comes to an end at that time. So they call it the hungry gap and that's before the fresh things that you've sown in in February March are ready in like the end of May or middle of May so you have a, a spell April May time when the garden is at its lowest um, but apart from that I have vegetables all year round so things like leeks kale purple sprouting broccoli um, uh, um, what's it called Swiss chard spinach beetroot that all lasts all winter and I grow something called winter cress I haven't got any at the moment but I winter cress is brilliant for salads in the winter you can get lettuces that grow in the winter I've got some lettuces called Ar Arctic lettuces and I'll sow them in August in the greenhouse or outside and they will last over the winter that's great. So a couple of questions, Joy, uh, for us. First of all, David uh, asks, is it too late to start, you know, for this season? No. Um, no. So you nope. could get started and obviously yep. plant those things that are going to produce later in the, in the year, maybe August, September, October. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And Anita asks about the soil. So do you have to keep uh, replenishing the soil or changing the soil every year so you said you talked about this special uh, mixture uh, the, the the third part of, of the Michaelite and this choir and and compost um, is that something you can use year on year or what yes do do that? yes it is well soil is obviously the medium in which the plants grow and as long as you replenish it so it has minerals in it then you can just use the soil it's like a base, isn't it, for your plants? Something that they get rooted in so that they stand up straight. Um, so as long as you keep adding uh, some kind of organic, um, you can make an organic fertilizer. Um, Mel, um, Mel Bartholomew gives you a recipe in his book, I think, for organic fertilizer. Uh, and I used to make my own, but now I just use this blood, bone and fish stuff that I bought. I happened to buy a big tub, so I've been using that. Um, so, yeah, as long as you keep it fresh and that because otherwise you, you don't want to use the same thing over and over again, because there's a thing called crop, crop rotation. So some crops take minerals, some minerals out of the soil, some replenish it. So um, I've forgotten what it is. There's leg legumes and oh I've forgotten anyway you're supposed to rotate and, and not sow the same thing in the soil keep doing that so one what we may do after two or three years is swap them over so that the high uh, cage is on the right and the low is on the left and so that we get some crop rotation and uh, Sue's asking do you get any worms in the in the soil mixture well um I I I use my own compost, which is full of worms. So I put that in. So I also, I also added um, organic manure, which I bought from my, where I get my stuff from, um, Proventer. Uh, I, I put, because I had raised beds before, I had some soil from there. So I put some of that down first. Then I put a whole layer of this organic, well-rotted manure. And then I put my mixture of the three things, compost, vermiculite and coconut choir. 
Um, what was the question? Um, yeah, about worms. Oh yeah, worms. Yeah, there are worms in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But not as many as you would get in, in good garden soil. And what about weeds and all those sort of things, uh, Joy? Do you get, you know, many weeds coming through? What's, what's it like? I'm getting little weeds coming through and I'm pulling them up. But it's so, the, the, the soil is so light that you just pull them up. You don't need a, a tool. You just do it with your fingers. Oh. Um, you do it with your fingers. And in order to plant seeds, I put my finger in, make the holes about half of my finger, about two inches, make the holes, fill them up with vermiculite and put the seeds on the top and cover over with a tiny bit of soil. And that's all it, there is to it. It takes minutes. Yeah. Um, David asks, where do you get the coconut choir from, Joy? I got it online and it comes compacted, really hard. It's like a hard block. Um, and then you just put it in the wheelbarrow, fill the wheelbarrow up with water, um, and it, it ends up looking like compost, but it's a lighter colour. Oh, Gordon is now about to show you some um, compacted choir that he bought, bought at the supermarket. I think he yeah. found it in Aldi. Yeah, I was really pleased. I was. Um... Uh, we were doing our shop in Aldi this week and uh, it's funny enough here it is so uh, just so you can see this is some that they were selling in Aldi today coconut flower compost and as you can see it's compacted sort of coconut so that's another kind of choir uh, that you can use and you add water to it and it just expands you know and um, so this is 10 litres and it was only £2.50 so it wasn't like it's not huge I'm not, I'm not saying it's you know you might want to buy bulk like we did um, but it's uh, it's available even in Aldi today there's the coconut choir that you can get um, so it's you know it's, it's amazing how these things come into the market and you can get them but we bought it online yeah yeah and ours was a bigger much bigger pack than that um, yeah. yeah, the vermiculite, vermiculite I bought online. Um, well, there is an outlay, Joy, to these things. I mean, obviously, yeah. getting that compost, that that mixture, the soil mixture, right? Yeah, yeah, um, that is the know, biggest outlay. Yeah, the there soil. is an outlay because if you, you know, we have three raised beds, so obviously that's they're quite big, um, and uh, but of course it's an outlay that's going to last for a quite a few years, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I have used, I haven't thrown away any of the soil from our last uh, raised beds. I, I've used it all and I just add to it, add a fertilizer, a natural fertilizer. So yeah, I mean, that will last us now. So we've, we've expanded our um, area slightly. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I buy manure. So I, I've, I've got another little patch where I'm going to grow, grow raspberries, but I can't plant them till November. So I put horse manure in for courgettes. So I'm growing courgettes and they honestly, they love it so rich. So you just put them, if you turn your compost upside down, put them on top. That's how they like it. Um, so this, this is, sounds like it's really easy maintenance. I mean, it, it, it's not, once you've done the, the, the growing this, this from seed and so on, um, you know, is this... Uh, is this something that you know you can easily do? You you describe those hand tools, Joy. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It, there's no digging with big big forks or spades. Mm. It's not break back breaking at all. It's easy because the soil is just so light. Yeah, and J Jacob asked, do you buy a lot of uh, veg from the uh, supermarket, or do, or do you just use uh, what you grow in the in the raised beds? I buy um, a vegetable box from Riverford. Um, I probably buy about three of these a month and spend about 15, 16 pounds a week on other veg. But at the moment, um, because I've got so much outside, I shall probably cut that down to two. Uh, I have to juggle it a bit. And uh, so I've got other things in the greenhouse. Um, so last year I had so many tomatoes that I've got a dehydrator 
and it dries out food to preserve it. So I've still got um, dried tomatoes, which I'm using. Obviously, we won't get the tomato crop till end of July, beginning probably at the earliest. Um, so I try and preserve some food. So this year I'm, I'm growing peppers. Hopefully I'll grow enough to preserve some and I'll definitely have enough tomatoes to preserve a whole load this year. And I'm growing chilies as well in the greenhouse. Um, so I do, we eat a lot of vegetables, but, um, you know, you can't, you can't be it fresh. I go out there in the morning and I pick kale. I, so this morning I picked, you can use the, the greens from radish and the greens from beetroot. You can, you can eat them. So we had this morning, we had, um, a little green from radish. We had Swiss chard, parsley, both types of kale and a few spinach and that all went in the green smoothie so it's just so healthy tell us about the watering process joy what do you do to to keep it watered and i water in the evening probably takes about a quarter of an hour watering the whole garden that includes the flowers at the front as well water from a from a um hose pipe and the blueberries have to be watered with rainwater so i've got two butts that i collect water yeah so Maybe. you have to be committed to watering and uh the advantage of having lodgers for us means that they do the watering when we go away very handy um so uh that that's just uh, really inspiring joy um it's lovely to see you know you growing things so successfully and and obviously contributing to a really healthy diet and making sure that you get lots of organic food inside you which of course yeah we're really passionate about uh, keeping ourselves well for the for the race in front of us so uh yeah so that's yeah i mean we, we started having green smoothies every morning about three and a half years ago and i haven't had a cold or cough since wow i haven't had i haven't been ill really apart from my eye problem i haven't i haven't had colds coughs Nothing, no flu, nothing, since I started having that every morning. Yeah. So I have it for breakfast and I can, if you're interested, I can show you how to make them. Well, maybe that's for another, uh, you know, workshop uh, another time. Yeah. You know? yeah. To make great smoothies and, uh, and enjoy great food uh, every day for breakfast. Yeah. That you yeah. But I think that's probably it. Unless anyone's got any questions, we're going to... Um, finish it there that's a good 50 minutes worth of thereabouts of uh, of joy's uh, expertise and uh, experience over the years yeah you can get um how i said about lining it, it um you can just buy lining material um obviously if you if you put it on a on a concrete base you wouldn't need to line it um but yeah there's loads of information on youtube how to do this just put square foot gardening and um uh, gardening in minutes you'll find everything you need to know i think yeah thank you to amy for putting that link up as well the gardening in minutes and uh, uh so that's brilliant and thank you to anita anita says i'm feeling very inspired now i'm going Good. to do next year thanks joy great so david says very inspiring uh, amma says thank you amma it's great to have you on the call very impressive and truly inspiring thank you so much Great. Raised beds, says Jane, are the way to go. They we are. A veg patch, but just garden straight into the soil. So many good ideas. Yeah. So even Julie says, thanks. Uh, very interesting. Thank you, Joy. Yeah. And Lovely. the thing about it is our soil is now depleted. Because we've used pesticides and herbicides, um, uh, the, the, the soil hasn't got in enough to feed us properly. And our bodies are um, overfed and undernourished. So what we need is nourishment from the soil. So it's so important that the soil is good. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, Amy suggests that you do a, you start a YouTube channel, George. So, uh, <laughs> the burgeoning career starts right here. Um, <laughs> yeah, so thank you. Lynn says that was very well presented. So uh, thank yeah. you for your encouragement, Lynn.
You can uh, make raised beds that are on stilts. You don't even have to bend down to do yeah. your gardening. That's amazing. Yeah, even from a wheelchair, couldn't you? And, um, yeah, you yeah. could. You could do it from a wheelchair. Um, Steve and Julie are offering some chicken manure. Oh, great. Uh, so if you want any chicken manure, please let me know. I think the answer is immediately yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to buy chicken manure from a chicken farm in Fairseat. And I, this is when we had an allotment in our last house. And I had um, a um, composter, was one of those ones that you tumble. Well, I didn't tumble it. I just filled it about half full with chicken manure. And I poured water through it. And it's got holes at the bottom. And I used to catch what came out of the bottom and water my plants with this concentrated liquid of chicken manure. And the stuff just jumped out of the ground with brilliant <laughs> stuff. It's the best manure you can get. So I think that's a good endorsement, uh, Julie. Thank you so <laughs> much for suggesting <laughs> chicken manure. Uh, that's got Joy very excited. Um, <laughs> that's, that's lovely. Listen, thank you everybody for being on the call today. I hope that's what it sounds as though some of you have been really inspired by that, which is great. And obviously Joy's around for you to ply with questions at any time. And uh, yeah, you're right, Jane. Chicken manure is wonderful and very smelly. It's horribly smelly. Yeah, but um, all, all good stuff. And uh, so that's really great. Thank you so much to Amy for your help uh, this afternoon for doing the techie part of this and keeping it all flowing. Uh, thank you, Joy, for uh, a great welcome. presentation and for all your inspiring uh, words and uh, for your example and showing us that video of what uh, you're doing in the garden. So uh, I'm sure we're all suitably inspired to live, live and eat healthily and to hopefully start our very own raised beds. Uh, so this is, session has been recorded and if you ever want to watch it, watch back and, and uh, it will be posted on YouTube on our WCC online so you can check it out and uh, listen again if there's anything you've missed or you want to check up on the information in it. Um, but thank you one and all. Um, 5.30 later in a short while, Mike Croydon is doing a short drum workshop uh, for anyone who just wants to be inspired to start drumming, I don't think you have to have any experience. So uh, do that at 5.30. And then 7.30 later this evening, Josh Field has organised a quiz for us. So uh, that will complete our day of workshops and activities and events to compensate in a little part for our loss of our church weekend. But it's been great having you uh, on, on this uh, webinar this afternoon. Uh, thank you again to all and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.